last verse. This is what it says. He is holy and reigns with splendor. Our God, Yahweh, sovereign King. He's full of wonder. Our God, Yahweh. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Transformational Ministries International Podcast. And thank you for tuning in. I am Lori. And I'm Jackie. And we are here today to bring that transforming word. Today, we are going to finish up on our, I guess it would be our series, uh, The Journey the call, the walk, and the end. So we have already talked about the call. Um, if you are a born-again believer, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, whatever you may call yourself, a person of the way, a messianic Jew, whatever you want to call yourself, mm -hmm. that means that you are 
uh, a child of God through Jesus Christ, um, you have a call on your life. Amen. Amen. That call is for salvation. Now, within that call is different things that God may actually call you to do. Uh, like I said, you know, you may be called to a, a, a large ministry or you may be called just to your family. Look, it don't even matter. One soul is celebrated. So whoever you're called to. Then we talked about walking this out. Now we are coming from Luke chapter 6. So this whole series has been in Luke. Mm -hmm. Because Luke is like a synopsis of what this entire walk with the Lord is like. So we're at the part where we talk about the end. And, you know, I, I, I was saying this to Jackie before we prayed, or during, while we were praying. You know, when we were born, we celebrate life. But... It's a funny thing because when you look at it, you're a baby and you start to grow up, mm -hmm. you are growing older, and then you die. That's the course of life. Yeah. That's the so. course of life. So even though your life has just begun, the end of that life is already in view. It just takes a little while, but it's already there. Now I want you to look at when you became a Christian, when you became a born-again believer, life as you knew it was over. That was the end yeah. for that life. That was the end that for old, that life. Man, yeah. yeah, that was the end for that. Now, without Christ, you, you're you this baby that grows up, becomes an adult, you're sinful. If that's not changed, that life remains the same. It's still going to come to an end, yeah. but it will be an end without Christ. An end Ooh. without God. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, uh, Woo. Yeah, that's going to... Yeah, it's sobering. Yeah. It's sobering. But when you become a Christian, the moment you become a born-again believer, that life, it ended. It was over. It's done. New life in Christ has begun, but yet you're still in the end. Mm -hmm. It's what you call the end times. You know, a lot of times believers are living life waiting for the end times to <laughs> begin. Look, you've already had one end and you're in another end. That's right, yeah. You're in another end. But while you're in this end, this end time, Look, there's something you need to be doing. So we're going to go through this. I don't think we're going to be here very long today, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to just go ahead on and hit this. We're in Luke 6. And we're going to start at verse 49. So I'm going to go ahead on and start reading. Today I will be coming from the Supernatural Bible. Uh, Jackie, what, what translation? Uh, I have King James here, and I have uh, the New King James. Okay. Uh, so okay. I'll need to uh, see, you know, you said Luke 6, and this one, take a mm -hmm. Bible and see what... Uh, so I'll be using the New King James also for um, another passage of Scripture. But for what I'm reading right now, I'm going to start with the... Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Supernatural Bible. Okay, so here we go. V uh, verse 46 says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my words and does, th and does them, I will show whom he is like. Mm. So whoever comes to the Lord and hears his word, which is the core of our walk with him. Well, I, I would say the Holy Spirit and Jesus is the core, but they're one. <laughs> but the word of God is the core of our walk 
are are walking this out. We uh, can't yeah. do this without the word of God. But he says, yeah. whoever comes to him and hears his words and does them. You can't do something that you don't know. So if you never, as a believer, take time out to get to know God's word, know it for yourself, how then can you live for him other than you make up some kind of way in your own mind to live for him? And you and, consider uh, that, you know, what you measure that as, well, I'm doing good. And, you know, and, and they always say it's, uh, it's impossible to know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And if any, any academic study or whatever, you don't base all, everything on just what the professor or the preacher is saying. Mm -hmm. You have to study it and read it for yourself to mm -hmm. get it down into you. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're not going to know it. But if you get into the word, whatever word, whatever you do, it, with academic studies or whatever, you have to read, and, and they always say reading is the key. And uh, you know, people, if if you know if you can't read, mm -hmm. then you 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 you're limited in what you can do and what you know. But if you got the word of God, now you can you can listen to you the can word listen of God to it, and yeah. go along with. You know, that's what that's one of the things I did early because it was a little difficult to read the Old Testament and uh, the kind of language. Because we, all we had basically, I it was the King James. Mm -hmm. But when you read and and you listen to it verbally and mm -hmm. you and you're going through it, as you read it, you'll be able to hear mm -hmm. as you come back to read again. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to hear that audio in your head mm -hmm. as you go back and that's read right, it. That's right. That's right. Well, and I'm gonna tell you something else. You'll be able to hear you. You'll be able to hear the voice of God. Absolutely. You'll be able to hear the voice of God, whether somebody's just reading the scriptures or expounding on the scriptures. When it's God, you will be able to hear him in the midst of that. So if you can't read, listen. You know, and, and, and in my case, uh, I don't try to read for uh, uh, the, qu the quantity, but the quality. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. other words, I may stay in, I may be in a, a verse for a while, just reading over that verse and over the verse, and that's the Holy Spirit. So show me what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to read a whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two verses when you're talking, you're not trying to remember it and then trying to, you know, just memorize you it. Want it you, you, want, you want a revelation of what that's yeah. saying. And the Spirit of God is the revelator. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, he said that um, whoever comes to me and hears my words and and looking at this bible the word my is capitalized mm, the yeah. m is capitalized you know there's a lot of words out there but specifically he said my words yes yes jesus yeah. and does and does them i will show whom he is like i'm going to show you who you're like and we're going to see this through the scriptures mm -hmm. he said he is like a man who built a house and dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house, but could not shake it, for it was founded on rock. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back some. He said this person is like a man who built a house first and foremost. Who built a house. I want you to use your your imagination and your um, as you walk through the scriptures. He says that he is like a man who built a house. If you have not built a house, this won't matter. Now, I'm not even talking about naturally. I'm talking about spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because when you become a born-again believer, the building starts then. You start building upon what Christ has done. He said for us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That means you start to build upon what he has done. 
the foundation was laid. The foundation of salvation was laid. Your sins have been forgiven. Yes. You are in right standing with God. You are the beloved of God. You you have a relationship with God, but you have to build upon that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens, people have these encounters or an experience with God. That was the beginning. And that was the end. They never get to a place where they start to build upon what God has done. Going to church is like a pebble. If that's all you're doing. Yeah, that's all you're doing, yeah. That's, that's like a pebble. You haven't even made it down to the rock. You're still in hard dirt, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and let me give you a visual here. Hard dirt can be washed away. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Rocks can be moved, but they can't be washed away. And then you know if if you if you think about a foundation, see a foundation and footage had to be dug down mm -hmm, deep mm -hmm. where the where the house is built on and you and you put the concrete down there and rebars mm -hmm. to reinforce the concrete so it doesn't does not shift. Mm -hmm. So you got that round so you and so you and then you lay the a slab on it, then you build mm -hmm. on it. Well, that's what the scripture says after that. He says, and he dug deep. Deep. Right? Now, I'm trying to give You're the spiritual the visuals behind this. So, you you are the house that you're building upon now. You're, you're building your spiritual house. Right? Digging deep means that you take these scriptures... You know, and you start to do what Jackie just said. You read the scriptures and you ponder the scriptures and you look up words that you don't understand or maybe you don't get what he's saying. And so now you're calling out to him. You're crying out to him. You know, you're, you're seeking him to find out, Lord, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Let me read something to you real quick. We're just going to follow the Holy Ghost today. Well, we do that every day. <laughs> But let me go here to uh, Proverbs 2. Let me go to Proverbs 2 real quick. Yeah, that was not. Uh, you never know. You never know where you're going, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let me go here. My son. Let me, this is a Proverbs 2 verse 1. I'm going to start there. It says, My son, if you, re, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for knowledge. Because you can get into the word and you don't know what's being said. You don't understand. But he said, cry out out for knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding if you seek understanding and knowledge seek her as silver understanding and knowledge which is wisdom seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god come on now <laughs> come on now good gracious Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you're digging deep, you may not know how to dig deep when you first start. But to make it simple, this is not you learning Greek and Hebrew and all of that. This is not that. That's right. Yeah. This is you seeking God. You can't search the word out if you're not in the word. You got to get in the word and find out. Uh, you know, what is he saying? One of the things that happened to Jackie and I during COVID is as we continue to just study the word of God, we start seeing a lot of different things that were being taught were not lining up with the word. How was we able to know that? Because we were digging deep. Yeah, yeah. And digging deep don't mean, you know, you going into all of this revelatory stuff. No, <laughs> you just crying out to know, God, what are you saying? Because I want knowledge of the real God. There's a lot of people out there got knowledge. And let me tell you something. They are into a lot of different stuff. They go down a lot of different rabbit holes, you know, searching out stuff. But what we are to walk away with the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. and knowledge of God. Now, if you got that, <laughs> that you 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 you're doing something now. 
You're doing something now. You have something now. So he said to dig deep and lay the foundation on rock. Hmm. On rock. That's going to make more sense in just a little bit. Now, Jackie gave us the real analogy of what it's like to build a house. They have to dig down deep, and then they have to pour this concrete. There is your rock. Yeah, but and, then and, they and enforce it with yeah. these bars mm -hmm. and to keep it from moving, keep it from shifting. Is that's that correct? A, that's right. Right. And so this is so that when situations happen, which things do happen, you know, your house is not automatically uprooted and, and, and moved away. Now, if it's a fire, you that's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. But if, if water comes, many houses stand because of the structures being sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go on. Now we're going to come back to this um, and the and lay the foundation on rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against, this is like a hurricane or a tornado or something like that, a tornado with water, you know, so the mm -hmm. hurricane, right, vehemently against the house, but could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. And and that, and, and that rock here is it's a, a, a the textual reading is for it was well built. It was well built. Mm -hmm. Founded on rock. Founded on rock. When I first read these scriptures, I would always read them as in if it was saying founded on the rock. But when you look at this spiritually, we see the that rock the, of ages. the rock, and the rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. The rock. The rock is the Word of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And and uh, uh, just uh, piggyback on just a little bit of that mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Christ in, in in just Ephesians chapter two and verse uh, nineteen to uh, twenty two says, "Now therefore." You, which is you Gentiles, are no longer strangers and foreigners, mm -hmm. but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in which in whom the whole buildings being fitted together grow into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also have been built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Mm, mm, mm. That is our rock. Uh, amen. That, that is our rock. Christ is our rock. He is the beginning and he is the end of this faith that we have. He is our rock. Amen. It's not us. It is him. And I also want to read, um, I want to read Isaiah 43. And I'm not going to read too many of the scriptures, but I'm going to start with number one. Because I, we need to know what the Lord says about when we go through. So we're reading this parable about when the floods come. Okay, yeah. And vehemently hit against this house. But I want you to also know what the Lord says about when we deal with these type of situations that will arise in life. This is just a parable and it's used in a flood. But there's all kinds of things that come into our life and beat against this house that belongs to God. Ooh, amen, this temple. Yeah, amen, the temple. Uh, verse 1 in 43, it says, um, Thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You have to make this word mm. speak to you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. 
and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Now, this is the Red Sea and it's uh, Jericho. Mm -hmm. This is the two times Israel had to go through uh, go the, that yeah. water. And he says, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. I'm going to stop right there. And, 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 and you see that? You just talked about the Red Sea, mm -hmm. Jericho going mm -hmm. through, Jericho mm -hmm. opening up. Mm -hmm. It was at flood stage mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. It opened up. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego went, went through, through the, the fire, fire. Mm -hmm. were not scorched. Mm -hmm. So he's they verify and backing up everything that happens. The no matter what up. you go through, that's 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 what I'm seeing. That you know the flood, the water, the river, the fire. You're 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 exactly right. And you know, as much as we would like to live this life and be honest and not go through hard times or mm -hmm. struggles or fires or floods or you know whatever the thing comes into our life the truth is is no matter what we go through god says i am yeah. your god i'm your lord yeah. i'm your savior i will be with you I will be with you, and some people for them. Some people that may not be enough, but it's enough for me because and, and see, the presence and, uh, of the Lord is what makes the difference in our life. And see, Lord, and you know, take that. You know, to me, what the world talks about, what religious is about, or what how you should be blessed. Um. Because you're a Christian, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be going through nothing. You should be able to speak something, and you should be able to do this. You should have all the good things of life. There should be no bad. If if, if, if you're going through, it's because of your sin, and because of, and that is not true. Mm -hmm. the, the fact of the matter is, no matter what you go through, that can't be compared to what God has for you on the end when that day come, when the day of the Lord come at the rapture of the church. Of the resurrection, you know, come on now. When hmm. you when you add it all up, you know that's that's that that that's that's a biggie there. That's a biggie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and sometimes people don't want to hear that, Jackie. If we be honest, they don't want to hear the fact that as a believer, you're still gonna go through, and you're gonna go through some of the things that people in the world go through. But the difference will be your end. That that will be the difference. Whether you you go through it and it takes out your physical life, you're gonna be with Christ. Yeah, yeah. Or and you, you go believe through that. it. You have to believe that. If you don't believe that, then you you, you yeah you 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 could. If you don't believe that, yeah, you don't have the hope. But see, scripture said that. But if you have hope. Only in this life, mm -hmm. you are miserable, but your hope must be in Christ. Right. And Christ right, right. is resurrected. Right. Right. And in the resurrection, that you're going to be raised. Mm -hmm. So you, so you, you, and, but like you say, but you have to be a doer of the word. You have to do the word. In other words, if you accept him as your savior, then your life should reflect the change in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me go over here and then I'm going to come back to I'm going to come back to Proverbs again but I want to read something in uh, Philippians. This is in chapter 1. This is something Paul said. He said for uh, in, 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 in uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 it starts. It says for to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire to depart and to be with Christ 
for that is far better. Now, Paul was in the end times just as we are in the end times. But look at how he looked at life. And, and I want to break out the point, just one little point, that Paul was in prison. This is a, this this here is a prison epistle. He was in prison. Mm, mm. So, you know, yet, yet and still, his imprisonment was uh, in Christ. He was in Christ to the point where it doesn't matter where I'm located. Mm. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. I'm in Christ. Wow, wow. And he said, like you say, like you say here, on the earlier part, he said that 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 he was a him and Timothy, a servant of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The verse twenty four says, "But to remain in the flesh is more need is for more necessary on your account." Mm -hmm. On your account. That was just a quick view of how someone in Christ viewed life to him death was gain you know we not we don't look at it like that we, no, you no. know oh god i want to live to see my see my grandchildren i want to live to see my grandchildren get grown i want to live to see this i want to live to see that you know but the truth of the matter is is that while we are in this end right here, it should be about building a solid, strong foundation so that we can end up being like Paul. And, and, and Paul says, uh, that particular passage you just read, mm -hmm. um, uh, from like 21 down to 23, mm -hmm. and he has said earlier in reference to that was uh, in Galatians chapter uh, 2 and verse 20, it said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, mm -hmm. not I, but mm -hmm. Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He considered himself, again, dead with Christ. Dead with Christ. Mm -hmm. Dead and, with and Christ. That, we have to consider, that's, that, that, that's, that's the gospel mm -hmm. uh, that Paul preached. You know, basically, we are we going to raise, we're going to, Regardless of what's going on, we're in him, and we're going to be raised. We're going to be raised regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is really interesting because, like I said, oftentimes Christians are sitting around waiting for something to happen. But I want to say it's already happening. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, look around you. Look at the things that are happening. Look at the things that are eventually going to affect the life of Christians being able to just speak and 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 be an outward Christian. You're gonna have to do it anyway. But like right now, you can go anywhere. Oh, I'm a, well, not in certain countries, mm -hmm. but you can go anywhere in the U.S. and it's like you know I'm a Christian or whatever. And you're just not gonna have a whole segment or population mm -hmm. of people rise up against you, and, right? Uh, see, just like the church started, the church started. The, you know, the book of Acts, and, mm -hmm. and when the Holy Spirit came, and the apostles, there was two things happening. Persecution, Persecution. and the power of God mm -hmm. was manifest. Those are two things that was happening. And the persecution caused the word of God to even go even more. Even in Egypt, mm -hmm. the greater Pharaoh persecuted the children of Israel, the more babies they had. Yeah, they, yeah. The more they, they, they populated. So, so God, under pressure, mm -hmm. like diamonds, it come pressure. They're made out pressure, of yeah, mm -hmm. pressure. So when pressure comes, as the book, as they started out, I believe the church is going to end like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to end with the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and in great persecution. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is, what are you going to do when persecution comes? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the solid rock in, if you're not on the solid rock of Christ and mm -hmm. doing the work of God, then when someone challenges you, you're going to deny him. Mm. Ooh, that, that's, a, that's a scary place to be. It's a, a scary place to be, but like, you know, we have time, as in like right now, build a solid foundation right now. Yeah, it takes time, but God is supernatural. <laughs> he can do in you in one day yeah. what it would take you 10 years to do. Right? Mm -hmm. You just have to have 
You got to just be about that. Like this parable that he's giving us, what he's showing us is if you hear his word and do his word, this is like a man that's building a house on a solid foundation. But let's look at what happens when you don't. He says, but he who hears and does not obey mm. is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation against which the stream beat vehement, vehemently. Immediately it failed. And the ruin of that house was great. It collapsed. That was the end. Collapse. It was over. Collapse. Whoo! Man. Mm. Simple, mm -hmm. simple message. Hear the word. Obey the word. But do you know, even in obeying the word it's God helping us the scripture says he works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure first of all I work in you a desire to do it and then I help you do it <laughs> amen amen yeah cause he said I'm, I watch my word and I, I will perform the word you, you just do it you just do whatever I tell you to do, but I'm going to enable you to be able to do it. To do. Because you don't have it in you yeah. to do it. You don't have it in you to obey me. You need my help. I work in you the willingness to do it. Because in our flesh, we don't want to obey God. In our flesh, our flesh is enmity against God. Oh, yeah. Our flesh want to do what it want to do. The only interest our flesh has is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's where our fleshly desires are. It's about what I see. It's about what I can consume, what I have. And, you know, I want to be better than you. I want to have more than you. I'm just consumed with the ways of the world. That's, that's the yeah. flesh. That's right. I, I want to feel good. Give me some sex. Give me something to drink. Give me some drugs. I, I just, it, it's its just about me. It's just the flesh. Yeah. Enmity. That means enemy against God. And, and, and the and thing is about it, if you fill your appetite with world, worldly knowledge and world things, you're going to feed that flesh. Mm, you're mm. going to feed it. And that's the problem. You're you 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 you're feeding the wrong thing, that's that's enmity against the word of God. Feed your spirit with the word, mm -hmm. not not with the, with the lust of your eyes. You all the things that you see and like you say, and all the things that you desire to have in your flesh, and all the knowledge and wisdom that you want. You want to be somebody special. You want to be at the pride of life. Those things is not is not of God. You they, they, you, know, you love that. You, you can't you can't be a love of God. I'm going to tell you something else, too. We want to feel good. Uh, we Everything is designed around feeling good. If a diamond was a person, a diamond is forged under four tons of blue dirt. Mm -hmm. Four tons of dirt pressed on it, forming this crystal. If, di if a diamond was a person, nothing about being formed would be easy. Oh, yeah. But the truth is, we just want to feel good. We just want an easy life. We don't want anything to be difficult or hard. But even Christ didn't have that kind of life. No, yeah, Peter yeah. didn't have that kind of life. Paul didn't have that kind of life. None of the John disciples. Let's know, look at Stephen's. <laughs> My God, this man was stoned to death yeah. and still stood up and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you ever see Jesus after, the, after he has ascended, stood up. Because his work was done. Mm-hmm. He was back 
in the glory where he wanted to be. But yet, during Stephen's stoning, the scripture says he stood up. But yet, we just, we don't want to go through nothing hard. We just want to feel good culturally. Everybody's going through this. Oh, I've been through this and I've been through that and I this and I that and oh me, pose me, woes me, all of that. And you're looking at the entertainment tonight and the Hollywood and stuff like that and the, and all this other stuff that people you, you, that you you know you, you you got to do better than that. Even but let me tell you something, Jackie. Though even that is a lie. That's yeah. not these people real lives. These people have perfected speaking. They have perfected taking pictures and being on red carpets and all that. That's not their real life. If you really examine their lives and you start looking at the numerous divorces, you start looking at the numerous times they suffer with drug addictions and all of these different things. And, and suicide is going to come up. And absolutely. And, many, and then all of the stuff that they go through, sexual assault, uh, child child, uh, pornography, you know, stuff that's being done against children. It's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see, that they don't talk about. Why? Because of the love of money. That's my they point. will endure this craziness because of money. But if you could pull the curtains back and see what's really going on in these people's lives, it would not be entertainment. It would be tragedy. Oh. It would be tragedy. It would be tragic to see what their lives are really like. This whole construct is a lie. We sit there in front of the TV and watch this stuff, but we're believing a lie. The only real true life is the life in Christ. That is it. Mm. We're in the end times, and so are they. <laughs> so are they. Life as they know it is winding up. It's coming up to a close. When this thing is said and done, you're going to be in one or two places. You're going to stand before Christ at the beamer seat. Your sins have already been paid for. Now it's what did you do? How did you build on this house? Oh, yeah. What kind of house did you build? Right? You too busy having fun, too busy making that, making them coins. You know, what did you do? How did you build? But then there's another seat. I, I, I'm sorry. Another presence. You're going to stand before God at the white throne judgment. Right. So it's only one or two places that you're going to be. That's right. You build this house now by through the word and, and doing the word. Ooh, talk good now. Oh, my God. Or on that, one. that house will <laughs> collapse. That collapsing will be you before God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't want to stand before God, Ooh, my, my, the my. judge. Mm. I want to stand before Christ. And I don't even want to stand before him having not done what he wants. I want to stand before him having done what he called me to do. I've realized most likely I'm not going to get it all because I, you know, for whatever reason. But I want to give it my shot, my yeah, best yeah, shot. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. can't get 100, Lord, let me get 97. Yeah. You know, not not zero, not not give my life to the Lord and don't do nothing at all. Yeah. And, and you know, the one with those real big platforms and a lot of followers, Lord, they're going to be held accountable for a lot. You know, much is given, much is required. And whatever you have, whatever, if, if there's a, if there's two, uh, if there's two talents, if, like I said, five, 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 five talents, whatever, one, you got to work, do whatever your ability Whatever that is, whatever mm -hmm. God, opportunity that God opened, sharing the gospel, and and, and believe it or not, you doing that every, every you, people calling you, you giving counseling with uh, and sharing the gospel, and that's what you're about. You're about sharing the gospel. You know, not about. Well, I understand what you're going through. If I was you, I'd do it. No, no, what the word what of God says. What does the word say? of God say? What does the word of God say? That and that's it right there. And I don't have a lot of. In comparison to a lot of folks, I don't have people beating my door down, trying to hang out with me and do stuff with me or whatever. But you know what? I kind of look at that like that's a that's a cost. That's a price you price you pay because anybody can transform their personality for the sake of drawing people to you. You anybody can. Mm -hmm. You can you can become more uh, superficial and and more worldly. 
you know, fitting more into the world. If that's what you want, it is not what I want. It's not what I desire, right? What I desire is what we're reading right now. I desire to build my house on the rock yeah. and build it the way that God has set it out for us. You know, the, the title of this podcast was uh, dealing with the end, um, the journey, I mean, the call, the walk, and the end. You know, one could take that to mean the end of life, physical life, the end. And that's true to this message because building your spiritual home now prepares you for the physical end. It prepares you for when this life is over. But I think that Jackie and I want to reiterate the fact that you are already in the end. That's right. You're already in it. Every day you're growing older. Mm -hmm. Every minute you're growing older. You know, and then you don't have no idea when the actual time is up. So you're already in the end. Build now. That makes me think of Noah. That was already prophesied to him. It's going to rain on your head. <laughs> I'm just being funny. Yeah. Oh my. But it was already yeah. prophesied to yeah. him that the waters were coming. Yeah. The judgment of the world have come upon me. Once you hear yeah. that, once you yeah. know it's that, you, the end is already here. It's already here. There's nothing new under the sun. It came because of evil. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of evil. This is, it, eventually, this is going to end also. This world as we know it. Yeah. And yeah. the only thing going to last is it going into that uh, millennial kingdom mm -hmm. with the Messiah, Jesus Christ of yeah. Nazareth. Yeah. So we need to we need to build now because the end of that, um, the parable was that when that stream beat vehemently against this home that was built on the ground, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great mm. so if you think about this spiritually you think about when life hits if you're truly not grounded in the Lord if you're truly not solid in the Lord that's that's your end right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the end that whenever that situation hit you're going to fall and it's going to be a great fall but we have time right now, at this moment, one, to repent. That's right. And two, start to build. Start and, to build and, and, now. And, and, you, and you know, the script, some scripture says you have to be rooted and grounded in the word. Okay. And and then also in Psalms, it said one, it says, he that hear the, uh, you know, like meditate on the word of God mm -hmm. is like a tree. Planted by the water, spread out its roots deep. This is the, this is this is also a way of being rooted and grounded in the Word by meditating in the Word of God. It's all about the Word of God, being rooted and grounded mm. in the, the Word. Mm. That's that's the whole whole uh, uh, objective. Because if you're not, if you don't know the Word, you just kind of you just kind of you, you're saying when when tri tribulation is going to come. Yeah. And 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 when it come. You're like, God, what's going on? Oh, I guess I'm not safe. No, you got to be, be calm. These things will come. Not, not just be calm and rest in the Lord. Well, he said in me you will have peace. But in this world, you're going to have tribulation. So that means that in Christ, no matter what happens, you're going to have peace. It's, it's perplexing to you, some, to the person, and it's perplexing to the world. How can you be going through this and you be so peaceful and be so calm and be so happy? I think people see this in nursing homes all the time. There are people that are in nursing homes that are saved. They had given their life to the Lord. You know, maybe their family failed them. I don't know, you know, but they're in these nursing homes. Or maybe their family is there, but that's just where they had to go. But they so full of God, they so full of Christ that 
death was not anything hard to them. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this, but I just, my friend, her mom just died. Her mom, through this death process, conversation with God was so heavy. Mm. You know what I mean? It was a dead giveaway. This lady got a relationship with the Lord. She was talking to him like they were friends. She yeah. wasn't hoping you hear me. Uh, 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 Lord, if you yeah, hear me, that's no. That's when you want to leave here, in that kind of peaceful transition. Yeah. And, and and when you have that, that's how you leave. But if you don't, you leave with fear and, 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 and you're terrified. Yeah. You Now you're terrified. And believe it or not, those out there that are thinking they don't need, need Jesus, when that death comes, and it's going to come, and if it's, if it's subtle, you might not realize it, but if it's gradually, you're gonna fear. Fear is gonna you're gonna you're gonna be terrified, mm. and then you may not be at the position to say, "Lord, forgive me." Mm. It may not happen. Don't take a chance. Don't take a chance. Get this thing going now. Get it settled now, and begin to grow in Christ now. Mm. Now is the day of salvation, for tomorrow is not promised to us. I always say. You're one heartbeat from eternity. When the heart stop, that's it. Mm. And on this life. Woo! My, 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 my. The, the preparation time is right now. And that's what you said read by Paul. And like I said, you know, he, 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 he realized that it was a greater life for him. He said, you know, it's, you know, it, to, to die is gain. Yeah. You know, yeah. die in Christ. You know, I, I think, Jackie, sometimes you have to really think of, you have to go ahead on and have those thoughts because most people run from those thoughts. They don't want to, I don't want to think about dying. I don't want to think about it because if I think about it, it may happen. <laughs> you know, well, it's, we know that it's going to happen. We don't know when, but, you know, in order for you really to not be afraid of those, your life really has to be in Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to really be done got to a place where you really understand and know and believe that it's better. See, all we know is this world right here. So giving up this world permanently to us is like, it's scary. We're not going to know what's going on no more. We're not going to see our children or our grandchildren. You know, we're just not going to have life. And so when you think about it like that, you think, oh, I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to, you know. Paul had family. Yeah. He had a brother yeah. and a sister. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't married. But, you know, Jesus said, what did he say? If you love your mother and father and sister and brother and wife and brother more what than me, love me, you're not worth of me. Of me. So they got the, and then, and then he said, when he said, say, oh, so say, look here, um, Lord, your brother, your mother, your sister, your brother's out there. He said, who are brother, they? He said, who are he said, look, he looked around and said, you know, these are my brothers and sisters, them that do the will of my father. That's right. That's right. So as hard as death is to look at or that particular end, you know, you have to. Because you got to come to a place where you, that would be greater than this. Mm -hmm. Right now, for many the rewards that this world give you is greater than the rewards you believe that the Lord would give you. Yeah. 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 Well, getting the word of God is precious. It is a blessing because there are people in places around the world, they don't have it like that. They cannot have the word of God like that. They cannot have Bibles. We got, and between the both of us, we may have 30 Bibles in this house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are people that don't have it like that. Mm. So why would we squander the blessing that God has given us, a country where we are free to read the Bible and, and preach the Bible? And those times, are, that, that, that those windows are clo closing. Slowly. Yeah. In Canada, people are already going 
to jail for just preaching what the scripture says. I'm not even saying it. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. So I'm being persecuted for my belief because I believe this is real. I believe this is true. So I'm being put in jail for that. What? Mm -hmm. Is that not what happened to the, the, um, the, the disciples in the beginning? Yeah. 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 So if you don't want to think about it, it's not going to make it go away or make it not true. Hmm. So you might as well say, Lord, help me. Help me to really face what I'm really a part of, what I should be doing, how I should be building, how I should be living. Help me. Because maybe I'm caught up in this world. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm caught up. Maybe I don't really realize the end is near. Whatever that end is. We're in the end times of this Christ. And, 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 and as, as we know the time is still, you know, 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, mm -hmm. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We know the time is that it's still the same. But what is happening, things are going so fast and, and this world is moving so fast and technology is moving well, cell phone is good today. Next next week or next year, it's out of date. Computer, everything is moving so yeah, quickly and so yeah. fast. It's moving faster than ever before, and and it, and it seems like seem like time is moving quicker. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and 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 the, the scripture talked about um, the, the during the end time that how time was would be an essence and seem like it's moving. And next thing you know, you're 20 years old. Next thing you know. You're 35. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. And you're like, you ain't going to be 25 long. You're going to be 20 long. You may be, be, be because like you say, we're born and we and, and at, at some point, life stopped growing and start declining. Declining. Exactly. You're like a pyramid. You go, you're going to go up and after, at, at that, whatever that time is. And that's it you know, for your growth, and then you start going down. Yeah, that's amazing. But that's already, it's already there. It's not something that may or may not appear. No, that's going to happen. Yeah. As long as you are alive on this earth, what you just said, Jackie, you're going to be on that pyramid. You're going to get to a place where it's going to start to climb. I think it's about 40. I think it's when, once you hit the age 40, that's when... You are fast tracking now on this older spectrum, yeah. and not only that is, um, some don't even get a chance. You know, like drive-by shootings, stray bullets, uh, accidents. People, I mean, there's any all kind of things happening now uh, to end life. Mm. Well, I want to kind of end on a on a good note. This is a. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to go back to Proverbs 2, and I'm going to read, um, I'll, I'm not sure where I'll stop, but I'm going to start at um, verse 6. And we know that the Word of God is the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. When the Lord talks about His words, He ain't talking about any words, because there's a lot of words out there that do not point you to God. They point you to humanism right. or they point you to another God or they make you think you are a oh, God. Yeah. Oh, man. So that's out there. But I want you to hear this. It says, For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. That would be us. Hmm. So I want you to listen to what the scripture says. He lays up sound wisdom for us. Sound wisdom is the type of wisdom that you get that will produce long lasting good. Right? That's the best way I can describe it like that. But he and it, verse 7 says he lays up sound, I'm sorry, sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. There's a lot of things that come our way that we don't even realize, but yet we're being shielded from it. I can imagine that. Mm. You know, what can the Lord show us that we didn't know happened 
and he shielded us and kept us from it. I was thinking about HIV the other day, and I was thinking, I thought HIV kind of came on the scenes in the 80s. No, that's when it was kind of revealed, but HIV was in the 70s. People were contracting HIV in the 70s, and it, probably even before that, but it, it didn't show up mm. until the 80s. But they already had it. They already had it. How many people came in contact with HIV? Because people were having sex, unprotected yeah. sex, left oh, and right. Yeah. But how many people came in contact with HIV and were shielded from it? Uh, yeah. Was kept from it? That's it. Or came in contact with some kind of a person that was a murderer, but you didn't know it. Or came in contact with a person that was scouting people in a club to kill them. And you were sitting there talking to him, but didn't even know it. I'm just giving. You know, you know, I, I just, this, you know, before you, you know, when when Jesus came in, uh, and and he preached in in, in in Nazareth, and when they when he did, I mean, they they, they wanted to throw him off the cliff, mm -hmm. but he in the he walked in the midst of them, mm -hmm. and they couldn't touch him because they couldn't see him. Right, right. God right. just shields Shield. the Messiah right. from that. Come on now, Jackie. Come on, come on. How hey. many of us been shielded from stuff? Yeah. I know that was extreme what I was talking about, but I I, I just happened to be. Um, reading about Freddie Mercury's life yesterday, and that's what made me think about that, you know. How many people around mm -hmm. that man also came in contact with somebody that had HIV, but they didn't get it? Mm -hmm. Is that a thing where you can come in contact with and not get it? Yeah. Yeah. Probably not every case. Probably a rarity, but it does happen. But anyway, let me go on. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He keeps the path of justice and preserves the way of his holy ones. Look at God yeah. at work yeah. Amen. for his people. It says, then he will understand the righteous, understand righteousness and judgment and equity and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart, we're still talking about the word, enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Listen what happens. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of the evil man. Again, yeah. how many of us have been around somebody mm -hmm. that was wicked or evil at heart and God kept us. Yeah, kept us. And that's what we're talking about from seen and unseen, unseen danger. And you pray, you know, you pray, God keep me from seen danger and also unseen danger. And he keeps us. Yeah. From things that don't, that that we don't even know. We don't even if we know. Knew, man, if we knew. Uh, you'd be going down the road and you, you see this accident. God allowed you to be your speed or your timing to miss that accident. Yeah. You, you, you could have been in an accident. Yeah, that could have been you. It could have been you. It could have been us. Yeah. Let me put it like that. It's, it delivers us from the man who speaks perverse things. As I was reading these scriptures and going over this and looking up all of these words, now I didn't bring all of that in here, but as I was going over it, I was thinking about people that per, uh, uh, speak perverse words. I was thinking about people that get over on you. Hmm. People that say things to trick you. They're evil, wicked people. Yeah. But they're saying stuff to trick you to get money or to get you to join something or to get you to be a part of something or get you to do something or whatever. How many of us have been kept from that? Yeah. Absolutely. And didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know that this person was so good at what they do that even the very elect would be deceived. <laughs> wow. But the only reason you wasn't was because of God. Because Not of God. because you are so special or you are so great mm -hmm. or whatever. 
but because of God. Because of him. Then he says you, you'll be kept from, delivered from, delivered from those who leave the path of uprightness. Mm. How many of us are around people that saying they saved? They left that path a long time ago. But yet, we don't even know it. They started out but they, Yeah, but they can't pull us into what they believe or stuff they say or whatever because we're shielded from that. We can't mm -hmm. hear that. We can't. Before I was saved and knew it, uh, now I gave my life to the Lord when I was a kid, clearly. But I used to go and sit with these Jehovah Witnesses and, you know, on several occasions listening to them talk. Jack, I couldn't hear nothing they were saying. But I didn't realize I couldn't. When I say I couldn't hear what they were saying, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't grasp what they were saying. But when a woman preached to me the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I wanted to stop everything I was doing. I was trying my best to be a good person from that day forward, not realizing that I couldn't stop myself from then. The Holy Spirit had yeah. to do that. Amen. Shoot. Praise the Lord. But I couldn't hear nothing they were saying. I could hear them talking, and they would ask me, do you understand? I didn't understand nothing they were saying because I was shielded. I was shielded and didn't even know it. Uh, and, and those that leave the path of, of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their path to deliver you from. And then it goes on. That, that's, that was in general for everybody, but this right here is for men. To deliver you from immoral women, mm -hmm. even from seductress who flatter with their words, who forsake the guide of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her path in path to the departed spirits. None of who go into her return again, nor do they take hold of the path of life. Whew. Now, this is what God shields you from, mm -hmm. delivers you from. So getting in this word and hearing God's word and keeping God's word and obeying God's word, there's benefits yeah, built yeah. in exactly. that will save your life. When I read this, that nor do they take hold of the path of life. It's like that's over for them. This woman who clearly was at one point with the Lord is no longer. Mm -hmm. Imagine a, 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 a person that was walking with the Lord now in the hands of the devil being used yeah. by him. All that spirituality now is being used. To bring down God's people. Bring down God's people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It, that's, that's, that's it. That's, well, that, Proverbs, that, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. That This parable today that we started with, it talked about whoever comes to the Lord, hears his words, and does them. And it goes on from there. You're like the person that's building this house on a strong foundation. And you're going to stand. There are so many benefits for being in the Lord and walking with the Lord mm -hmm. and obeying the Lord. Absolutely. And I was just saying, so you many know, benefits. Uh, if, if you're going, if you're going through something and you don't feel the peace of God and you know you're a child of God, just stop and pray and take God. And next thing you know, the peace of God will come upon you. You may not feel peace at that moment, and when that thing is going on with you. Something has just happened, and you just you you are just disturbed by it. But that's not the end of the story. Just hang on in there, and that peace will come in. Sometimes peace will come right away, and then peace will come as to, as you begin to seek God in your lives, right? For prayer, whatever, the peace of God will come and pass over you. Amen, amen. Well, I tell you what, Jackie and I are going to get ready to uh, get up out of here. Um, you know, 
I, I want to end by saying this. Um, all of us are at a place where we are walking this life out. This is us securing our end. Mm -hmm. We're all walking this life out. And we need to do it in a way where it reflects us being like the man who built a solid home. A home that could withstand anything that comes its way. That should be us. That's why you need one another. You definitely got to have the word of God. And, you know, we get that word on the inside of us. And that's what makes us strong. It's not all of this, you know, awesome man of God, awesome woman of God, and, you know, operating in, as this and that. You know, those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That don't belong to anybody. Amen. If you a prophet and you hitting a nail on the head, you better give God glory because that you. comes from him. That's right. But you building that solid walk with God. It's him working in you. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, um, all right, Jackie, would you like to close us Jackie, out yeah. with um, some prayer? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. Thank you for wisdom and understanding that uh, we know there's a deceiver out there come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he have people that he's using for the weapons of war. They are not carnal, but mighty through God to put it down on the strongholds. And we know that, God, we fight and not against flesh and blood, even though flesh and blood may be used by uh, in the Spirit to confuse us, to cause us to not rightly divide the word of truth and cause us to think that we, if we do the word by giving, uh, do the word, and it's always giving, always something that's going to take us into giving too much out of our own life. But what? But help us to be able to rightly divide the word of truth, so that we are know how to live the word, how to work work the word, and be a doer of the word, God, and not just a hearer only. And let let, let not let people deceive us because they want us to say do the word by doing something that's going to benefit them. But help us, oh God, to be able to see that. And we pray, God, that we'll be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And that word that we do, it will be a blessing to us, Lord. Not for someone else, but there will be a blessing for us to be able to walk in the peace of God, walk in your peace. And, God, we thank you that you give us peace, the grace, and peace in Jesus Christ. That's Paul always talked about that, the letters that he written uh, to, the, to the saints of God. Peace and grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you for peace. We thank you for grace. Grace, the unmerited favor that we didn't deserve, that you gave to us. It's ours, Lord. And whatever we're going through, you're going to give us the grace to go through it. And we want to thank you for our listeners. Ask you to bless them as they hear the word and live the word and be building their house upon a solid rock, the rock of ages, Jesus of Nazareth. He is the rock. And the apostles and the prophets is the foundation that we are building our house on, Lord. And we want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to give God some praise and get on up out of here. And you guys enjoy the rest of your uh, day and be blessed. Don't forget, build a solid home in the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> All right.